Hello everybody, this is Dr. Aparna from Anura Group of Institutions, CVSR College of Engineering. Today we are going to learn about plays and we are going to study a one act play called The Never Never Nest. What is a play? A play is a form of literature where the writer's dialogues and actors perform it on stage. I am sure you must have seen plays on stage or at school level you must have performed them on stage for the audience. Great writers like Shakespeare, Bernard Shaw have written different types of plays. Let us now understand what are the different plays that are written. Plays can be categorized in various genres. The first one is the comedy. A comedy is a play which is humorous, which makes people laugh. People enjoy watching a comic play. Comedies are the first type of plays that were ever played on the stage along with tragedies in ancient Greece. The next genre of plays is the farce. A farce is a humorous play like a comedy but is slapstick humor. It has strange characters in it and it makes fun of everybody around. Now the most famous slapstick humor play is the comedy of errors written by Shakespeare. The next genre is the satire. A satirical play looks at the society and tries to talk about the ills of the society in a satirical way. The next genre that we come across is the tragedies. Just as the comedies were first introduced in ancient Greece, the same way tragedies too were introduced. Tragedies have an unhappy ending. They bring out the emotions of the viewers and the audience. It moves their hearts. It has a dramatic climax. The most famous tragedy of Shakespeare is the Romeo and Juliet. I am sure you have all heard of that play. Then. The next genre is the history plays. The history plays are either tragedies or comedies but we cannot classify them like that. History plays relate incidents that have occurred in history. Shakespeare brought forth this genre. He has written many history plays besides writing tragedies and comedies. His famous history plays are Richard II and King John. I am sure you have heard of these plays. These are the different types of plays and plays make a very interesting genre in English literature. Now let us learn about the one act play. Now let us understand what this one act play is. As the name suggests this play has only one act. Unlike the Shakespearean plays which is divided into several acts, a one act play has only one act. A one act play adheres to the three unities of time, place and action. When I say time, the play shows or interprets an action that occurs within 24 hours or the rotation of the earth. The action does not occur over a period of time that is over six months or one year or two years that is what happens in Shakespearean plays but a one act play talks about action that happens in one day it can be performed in 10 minutes or one hour or whatever that is unity of time unity of action is it has only one plot it talks about only one major action that is performed it does not deviate into different acts that it has only one plot time Place, this third important thing is it has unity of place. For instance, this lesson, this play that you are going to study, Never Never Nest, starts in a lounge and it ends in a lounge. So for example, your play starts in a kitchen. From the kitchen, it does not go, in, go to the sitting room. From the sitting room, it does not move into the garden. The play is restricted to the place where it starts. It ends in the place where it starts. These are the three unities of time, place and action. Also remember the sub-genre of this one act play is called the flash drama 
that has become very popular in recent times and competitions are held in writing flash drama. But one act plays are not new. Euripides in ancient Greece wrote the first one act play called the Cyclops. Now let us understand and let us learn more about our one act play the Never Never Nest. Before we start talking about the play, let us talk about the author of this play. The author of this play is Cedric Mount. Cedric Mount is a playwright of considerable distinction. He started writing plays from 1932 to 1940. In his brief span, he wrote very commendable plays which have left a deep impact on the readers. These plays reflect the modern society and the modern world. The plays are Dirge Without Dole, To Cut a Long Story Short, Nature Abhors a Vacuum and 20th Century Lullaby. As I said, his plays expose the shams of modern day life. The play that you are about to read is all based on installments and higher purchase. Cedric Mount is trying to tell us that buying things on higher purchase is not good and that people should learn to save money. Let us now understand this play better. Now let's start with our one act play The Never Never Nest. Have you ever bought things on installments or have your parents ever bought things on installments? Well. Modern man is quite used to buying things on installments. We buy our houses on installments. We buy our motorcycles on installments. We buy computers, furniture in the house, fridge and also our clothes on installments. We also buy jewelry on installments. Modern life has become like that. Earlier days it was not like that. You ask your father or you ask your grandfather, they would say, we never bought things on installments. Yes, probably they must have bought their house on installments, but not ordinary things that we use in day to day life. And they led a better life than us. That is exactly what Mount is trying to tell us. The story is about a young couple called Jack and Jill who have a baby. They are visited by their aunt who is called as Aunt Jane. They live in New Hampstead in a very big house. The play starts in a lounge where the young couple are showing Aunt Jane around their house. They show her the radiogram, the furniture. Aunt Jane is quite surprised that they live in such a big and wonderful house. She is happy that they have all the modern facilities. They have a fridge, they have a radiogram, they have wonderful furniture. She is quite surprised that they are doing so good in life. And then Jack tells her that they have been able to achieve all this. They have been able to buy all this because of her. She is quite surprised and she asks them whether she had given them 200 pounds for their wedding or had she gifted them 2000. Jack says that she had gifted them 200 pounds. But she is surprised how did they manage to buy all these things in 200 pounds. Then she asks Jack how much rent he was paying for a big house like this. Jack says that he is the owner of the house and not the tenant. Aunt Jane is quite surprised. She thinks that Jack must be earning a lot of money. But then he says that he got a modest increment of just 5 shillings this year. She is unable to understand how can Jack buy such a big house. Then Jack tells that he had bought this house on installments. He was paying about 10 pounds a week and a few quarterly installments to own the house. Aunt Jane does not understand this concept of buying a house in installments. It is very new and very strange to her. Aunt Jane is very happy that Jack has got a big car. She thinks that he has bought the car and she appreciates it a lot. But Jack says that he has not bought the car completely. One steering wheel, 
two cylinders, one tire is what really belong to him because for the rest of the car he has yet to pay the installments. He tells Aunt Jade that he has bought the house on higher purchase. She is quite surprised. He tells her he pays about five pounds a week and a few installments and then eventually after a few years the car would really belong to him. Aunt Jane is disturbed. She does not understand why the young couple are buying things on installments. It disturbs her a lot. Then as she sees around she is very happy with the furniture that they have. But then Jack says they have also bought the furniture on installments. This really angers her. She does not even want to sit in the chair because only one leg of the chair belongs to them. They have yet to pay the money for the remaining three legs. She says that she is not interested in sitting on any of their furniture. She gets very angry and she says her motto in life was cash down. She has never bought things on installments and she hopes that they too would never buy things on installments and she is very unhappy that they are buying things like that. Aunt Jane is very angry with Jack and Jill that they have brought all the things in their house in installments. In fact, she gets disgusted and she questions Jack about his earnings. He tells Aunt Jane that he was earning 12 pounds a week and then she asks him how much installments was he paying per week. So he tells her that he was paying an installment of 14 pounds 8 pence a week. She is even more surprised. She asks him how does he manage to pay the installments when they are more than his earnings. So he simply shrugs his shoulders and says that he borrows more money from Thrift Providence Trust. This angers her. She says to pay the installments he was taking more loans and further getting into troubles. She doesn't like it and she wishes to leave the house. She says that she wants to go back home. Jack tells her that he would leave her at the bus stop in his car. She refuses to go in the car. She refuses to sit in the chair in their house. She says that it's better if she leaves the house because none of the things that they have got in their house really truly belong to them. Jack is quite disappointed but before leaving Aunt Jane gives them a cheque, a cheque of 10 pounds and she tells them to repay at least one installment so that at least one thing in their house truly belongs to them. Jack takes Aunt Jane to the bus stop. Jack comes back home after leaving Aunt Jane at the bus stop. He is very excited that Aunt Jane had given them 10 pounds as gift. He thinks that he can pay the two installments on his car loan. But Jill tells him that she had sent that check to Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin is the person who delivered her baby. They had not paid the full amount to the doctor at the time of her hospitalization. They had just one more installment of 10 pounds and then all their loans with the doctor would have been cleared. So she tells Jack that she had sent the 10 pounds to Dr. Martin so that the baby is truly theirs. Jack is very angry. He tells her that doctors don't really expect money so soon and he was eager to pay the two installments for his car and he is quite disappointed that Jill had paid the money to the doctor. Jill is happy on the other hand that she had paid the last installment to the doctor because she says that the baby is finally theirs. This lesson has also been written in an abridged form at school level and the lesson was called as the installment baby. I am sure you must have read this lesson when you were in school. So now after listening to the entire play I am sure you would have understood the significance of the title Never Never Nest. What is a nest? A nest is a house, a nest is a home that Jack and Jill wanted to live in, that Jack and Jill wanted to own. What does never never mean? When you buy things on installments and you, when you buy so many things on installments, there is always a possibility that that house would never really belong to you. So the title is very very significant. A house that would probably never belong to Jack and Jill because of 
the loans that they have taken and they as i said earlier jack was earning around 12 pounds a week and he was repaying 14 pounds and 8 pence a week that is a lot of money that he had borrowed and to repay the 14 pounds and 8 pence a week he was taking more money from thrift providence and fund so do you think leading a life like that is worthwhile do you think leading a life like that would make anybody happy especially jack and jill this is something which we all have to think. Are we leading lives like that? Are we moving towards a nest that would never be ours? Are we being too ambitious about acquiring things before our time? I hope you will understand the importance of not buying things on higher purchase. I hope you understand that buying things on installments are always not the right thing to do. This lesson tries to teach us that. I hope you have learnt a lesson and I hope you will be very careful when you start spending your money in future. I hope you will budget your money. I hope you will all lead happy lives without any tensions because they say money rules the world but always remember we rule the money. As long as you do not let money rule you, you are a happy person. As long as you do not let consumerism and material wealth rule you, you are a happy person. Always remember that you must spend whatever little money that you are earning carefully. The more money you save, the more money you earn. There is a saying, a penny saved is a penny earned. I hope this lesson has taught you something and I hope you will follow this and take this lesson as an example. The play tells us the demerits of buying things in installments or higher purchase. It is a play that is written way back in the 1930s or 40s but still it is relevant in today's context also because we are so used to buying things in installments and buying things in installments is always not good. Jack and Jill belong to a middle class family. They got 200 pounds from their aunt as gift and that is not a less amount. They could have lived a very happy life but they were very ambitious. They started living in a bigger house. They wanted to buy a bigger house, get a better car, have a radiogram, a fridge, everything in their house. But they all bought these things in installments. They wanted to buy things at a very young age, they wanted to buy a lot of things at a very young age when they were not really earning a lot. This is the problem of modern life. We wish to acquire things at a very fast pace. This was not the case when our parents were young. They took their life as it came. They bought things when they had money. I hope you realize that saving money is very important. It is a very good habit to cultivate. Learn to save money, learn to lead life frugally, learn to be austere. P.T. Barnum or Phineas Taylor Barnum is a great writer. He has said that to make a list. He says make a list of needs, make a list of luxuries. Whatever money that you are spending in a month, write down and categorize those things under needs or luxuries. By the end of the month, you would have realized that you have spent more money on luxuries than on needs. Our wants are more, but the wants were always more in ancient days and also in the past. But our parents and our forefathers, they realized the importance of saving money. They realized the importance of leading life in a simple way. We people are not like that. We want to buy everything, we want to hoard everything, we want to show off to people around us that we have everything in our house and in doing so we buy things on higher purchase and plastic money is something that enables us to do that but we never realize that this is the money that we have to repay and the loans keep doubling and tripling and that is a burden on us and on our mind. This lesson teaches us something very vital. It teaches us that buying things on higher purchase and installments is not good. The life that is led by Jack and Jill is not good. We should learn to be simple, 
we should learn to buy things which we need and not things which we want. I hope you have all enjoyed listening to this lesson as much as I have enjoyed teaching it to you. Thank you.